Hello, Mishbucha. It's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. I am back today with another Poetry Thursday video. Um, so today I am going to read and talk about Robert Frost's poem, Mending Wall. Um, Robert Frost was a very well-known American poet. He was actually born in San Francisco, of all places. Um, and I say of all places because his family uh, moved to the New England region and he later became famous in his poetry for writing a lot about the New England region. Um, so uh, his first volumes of poetry were A Boy's Will and North of Boston. Those were published in 1913 and 1914. Um, throughout his career, he wrote over 20 collections of poetry, and he also wrote several essays and four plays. Um, he was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal for his poetry in 1960. He also served as the Poet Laureate of the State of Vermont, um, and he won four Pulitzer Prizes for poetry. And here is the, uh, the, the, the fun Robert Frost tri trivia fact that always gets me every time I think about it. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature 31 times, but never won. Can you imagine? 31 times and he never won. <laughs> um, so he was known for the rural settings of his poetry and Mending Wall is no exception to that. He was also known for the use of rural dialect or vernacular in his work, although we don't really see that that much in this poem I'm, I'm about to read. Um, so some critics have claimed that Frost's work explores fundamental questions of existence um, and explores themes of loneliness and isolation, and I think there is some of that um, that's in Mending Wall. And critic T.K. Whipple wrote that in much of his work, particularly North of Boston, his harshest book, Frost emphasizes the dark background of life in rural New England with its degeneration often sinking into total madness. Um, so with that, I will read Mending Wall, and I will include a link down below to where you can follow along with me, and then I will just give a sort of brief uh, overview of the, of the poem after I'm done. So, Mending Wall. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that sends the frozen groundswell under it, and spills the upper boulders in the sun, and makes gaps even two can pass abreast. The work of hunters is another thing. I have come after them and made repair where they have left not one stone on a stone, but they would have the rabbit out of hiding to please the yelping dogs. The gaps, I mean, no one has seen them made or heard them made, but at spring mending time we find them there. I let my neighbor know beyond the hill, and on a day we meet to walk the line and set the wall between us once again. We keep the wall between us as we go, to each the boulders that have fallen to each and some are loaves and some so nearly balls, we have to use a spell to make them balance. Stay where you are until our backs are turned. We wear our fingers rough with handling them. Oh, just another kind of outdoor game, one on a side. It comes to little more. There, there where it is, we do not need the wall. He is all pine and I am apple orchard. My apple trees will never get across and eat the cones under his pines, I tell him. He only says, good fences make good neighbors. Spring is the mischief in me, and I wonder if I could put a notion into his head. Why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it where there are cows? But here there are no cows. Before I built a wall, I'd, I'd ask to know what I was walling in or walling out, and to whom I was like to give offense. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that wants it down. I could say elves to him, but it's not elves exactly, and I'd rather he said it for himself. I see him there, bringing a stone grasped firmly by the top in each hand, like an old stone savage armed. He moves in darkness, as it seems to me, not of woods only and the shade of trees. He will not go behind his father saying, and he likes having thought of it so well, he says again, good fences make good neighbors. So. This is a poem that I think is often, when it's just read at a very cursory glance, gets misinterpreted um, because of that line, good fences make good neighbors, but hopefully as you could tell when I was reading the poem, the, the speaker of the poem doesn't like that the saying of his neighbor that good fences make good neighbors and he's questioning why they even have this wall here at all, right? He says, you know, he is all pine and I'm apple orchard. and. You know, it's not like 
my apple trees are going to get over there and it's not like we have any animals that we need to keep to one side of the other person's property and so it's not just that there's a physical wall that separates them there's also this sort of emotional wall of separation between them as well you you get the sense that the speaker really would like to be closer to his neighbor but can't really figure out how to get the neighbor to meet him halfway so to speak um, when he, when the speaker says that whole stuff about spring is the mischief in me and I, you know, I want to ask him, um, you know, why do good fences make good neighbors, etc., etc. But he doesn't actually ask him that. Um, and he says, he, you know, he'd rather he said it for himself. Um, but yeah, that, that saying about the, 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 the neighbor's father saying of good fences make good neighbors, sort of leads us to believe that the neighbor is very sort of traditional in his beliefs and values and unquestioning of them, whereas the speaker of the poem who doesn't know why they have to meet to rebuild this wall and doesn't know why they need the wall and maybe would like to be um, ultimately closer to his neighbor probably seems a little bit more forward thinking and in any case more critically thinking about things um, and about the world and his neighbor um, and again is sort of seeking out that that human connection so I think that goes back to what I said before about a lot of Frost's work evoking these themes of of loneliness um, and alienation alienation and isolation um, but yeah it's it's a lovely poem and I, I quite like it a lot and in fact I've, I've taught it in several classes before and after um, after Donald Trump's election in 2016, the first time I taught another American Lit class and assigned Mending Wall, because uh, the border wall between the U.S. and Mexico had been such a prominent part of Trump's campaign, um, and because that was the case, the first time I ever taught Mending Wall after the 2016 election and after the um, inauguration, it felt very subversive <laughs> for the first time, so that was an interesting experience. So anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this. Let me know if you have thoughts about Robert Frost or Mending Wall down below. Thank you for watching this. I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whatever you're reading. And until next time, would it kill you to call you mother?